History is not always as kind to some as it is to others. While the history of Yellowstone is one of natural beauty, it is also one with a bit of a controversial past. Dr. Michelle Iden is the historian of Project Yellowstone. Her insight into the background of Yellowstone's creation and effect on people allows her to see the historical impact and how one can learn from it to better the future. Her knowledge of history of minorities uses Yellowstone to teach about the changes to Native Americans. Through her own first-hand experience of learning about the park and from Dr. Shane Doyle, a member of the Crow Nation, she is able to teach her students about topics such as the increased poverty and rates of depression on reservations and how the effects of ideas such as manifest destiny are felt today. I'm Professor Michelle Leiden from the History and Political Science Department. I'm one of five professors involved with the Community and Civic Engagement Project Yellowstone. My classes that I work with Project Yellowstone are the, are the History Minorities classes, but as a larger project, we take the subjects of biology and communications and history and use Yellowstone as sort of this microcosm uh, of study to show all the connections between those different subjects. In large part, um, for all of us, this was really a learning experience. I knew about Yellowstone, I knew the history of Manifest Destiny, I knew some of the history of Native Americans in the area because of my history of minorities class, but for us as well, the professors on the trip, it was a, a learning experience. So for me, it was to learn a lot about Yellowstone to see how I could incorporate that material into my classes. It was also, as we were there, if the other professors, for me specifically as a historian, had questions about Manifest Destiny that I could give them some of that background and then I then learned from them when we saw geological features, the history behind it, or uh, if we saw some of the animals to learn some of the specific names of them. Some of the other professors like to tease me because when we were driving around Yellowstone in the car, uh, I was really good at spotting animals but not knowing what they were. So I would just say like four-legged animal over there and then the biology professors would say like the genus and species and I could tell you the history of the impact of the animals but not know what they were. So it was the coming together of those different subjects. Uh, my favorite part of the trip was when we went to Artist Point which uh, is a result, it got its name because Thomas Moran uh, who was a painter at the time went uh, on an expedition Prior to the creation of Yellowstone as a national park, they, there were stories of the geological features, what existed in the area, and a lot of people didn't believe the stories that fur traders and others were coming back with, and uh, they thought they were just, you know, drunk around a campfire. And so when they uh, then had an expedition that went out to see what the land was actually like, they brought, uh, there were a couple different expeditions in the early 1800s, but in 1871, there was one, Thomas Moran, who was a painter, was on it. There was also a photographer on it. But Thomas Moran created a really famous painting of what became known as the Grand Canyon of Yellowstone. There's an enormous waterfall and these trees. And I mean, it's like it's like the Grand Canyon. It's the Grand Canyon of, of Yellowstone. And he painted it, and it was proof of what existed there. Um, but it also really captivated the entire nation and, and helped prove that this should be land that should be preserved. So there was another artist that went to see and tried to figure out, okay, where did Moran paint this painting? And he figured out it was probably around this one spot. So it became known as Artist Point as a result of that. Turns out they were probably wrong. It was probably actually on the other side of the canyon. But the name stuck. It's, it's a place where a lot of people go. and. I loved it because I used Thomas Moran's paintings in my US 1 class, my US 2 class, my History of Minorities class to um, talk about Manifest Destiny and the push out west and the this wide open land that captivated the nation and uh, I had been using a lot of Moran's paintings without even knowing as much of, about his connection to Yellowstone so when I actually got to see some of that history and it's also just a really beautiful sight. That was, that was my favorite part of the trip. I think the best lesson for students in terms of a historical perspective and taking a look at Yellowstone um, 
is really twofold. One is taking a look at an example of what is the relationship between people and the land. Um, and then the other is, uh, you know, at the entranceway to the northern part of the park, there's an arch, what's um, Roosevelt's arch, named after Theodore Roosevelt, and at the top it says, for the benefit and enjoyment of the people, which was in the act that created the park in 1872. And one of the questions then is, who are the people? Because Native Americans were in the area prior to it becoming a national park, um, but then it becomes a national park. It's clearly a part of the United States and American history, but you also have international visitors. And especially in the history of minorities class, one of the things we take a look at is um, when we talk about the United States, you know, who are minorities within it, uh, what rights do they have, who are the people, and uh, Yellowstone really serves as sort of the, the microcosm, the, this, this small example of this historical lesson that you then expand to take a look at, at larger themes. I think taking a look at Yellowstone is important to teach students today because the long-term impact is still present. You have, uh, it's still a national park and there's still questions in terms of how do we use that land, what do we do on it, uh, for everything in terms of wolves on the land, the bison and hunting, and uh, it's, I mean the relationship to the people of the land, and that that question and that debate doesn't go anywhere and it applies to everyone throughout the United States, um, throughout the world. Um, and so I think it's very easy to make the connections to today in terms of how do we use the land, how do we respect it, and how do we recognize that the history behind it impacts how we view it today.